years of never going to church, she decided to go to, to a local church near there. And although, although she was very poor and had only worn out clothing, she dressed in the best that she could and she headed out. As she approached the church, she saw all the people all dressed in splendor and finery and not a stain, not a rip or a tear on any of their clothes. And the preacher and deacons, they stood and they welcomed people as they entered. She began to walk up the stairs when one of the men stopped her and explained that they have a dress code there. He explained that clothes must be pristine and sharp to show respect to the Lord. And he turned her away, dejected and embarrassed. She left and she sat down on a bench nearby, crying and composing herself, wondering why a church of the Lord wouldn't accept her. And as she sat there, God sat down next to her. He put a comforting hand on her shoulder and he said, don't worry, they won't let me in either. Amen. Isaiah chapter 6, chapter 61, first three verses. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them a beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Lord, having been entrusted with these morsels from your word and bringing them to the family of God in this house today, Lord, I just pray that you will guide the, the word to where you need it to go in each heart and that you will cause it to have the effect that is your desire. In Jesus' name, amen. So beauty for ashes. Ashes is what's left after, um, after the fire burns something. It burns all the... Everything, everything except carbon, basically, and ash is what's left. So you blow on the ashes and they will fly away. Job lost his fortune, lost his home. He sat in the ashes of his home. Ash was all that was left of his life. And God restored Job to have more than he had in the beginning. Joy for mourning. Some, uh, some part um, of your life can come to ashes. Many of us that are the vintage that I am have experienced some part of your life coming to ashes. Sooner or later, we'll all have ash experiences. If you live long enough on the planet, you will suffer loss. I know some of the losses that some of you have had. That's the advantage of being a pastor of a small church. You get to know what the losses have been in, in the people that you love, and I do love. Death of a loved one, loss of your home, loss of your independence, Carol's parents. They couldn't take care of themselves anymore. They're living in Dubois, and so we built an addition onto our house to take care of them for their last years. They lived with us for eight years, but they grieved over the loss of their home and their independence. You know, it was, it was just, it was hard for them. They knew they couldn't stay there, but they are still grieving over it. And ash is what's left, figuratively speaking. Ash is what was left of the home and the life that they cherished before they came to live with us. We made 
we made as joyful and as dignified a life as we could for them. Her dad was a hungry man. I did the cooking. And it was a joy to me to see him hogging down everything I said in front of him and looking around to see if there was any more. Her mom was a real picky eater. But anyway, um, the oil of joy in the Old Testament times, oil was used to pour on guests during joyous feasts. They didn't just touch you with the oil. They poured it right on your head. It ran down over the beard and it was to make a face shine. Uh, when, the, when the anointed one comes, Isaiah says, he will give to the people of God the oil of joy for mourning. So may the Lord also give us the oil of joy for mourning. May he give that to us. Sin and Satan <clears throat> brought sorrow to humanity. Ever since Adam, ever since the fall, Ever since sin came into the world, our life on earth has been, you could say, a veil of tears since then. However, the Savior has come. Amen. Today it works. <laughs> the Savior has come. The Spirit of God has been given. Freedom and joy are here. The Savior came to provide us with the oil of joy instead of mourning. <laughs> the anointing breaks every yoke and brings freedom and joy to the people of God wherever Satan is causing pain and grief. So what is the garment of praise? The phrase garment of praise is a metaphor for the gladness and thanksgiving God's people feel when they are filled with the joy of the Lord. In ancient times, it was customary for a grieving person to wear sackcloth. And sometimes they covered them with ashes, the garments. The garment of praise is the opposite of sackcloth. It is the brightly colored raiment indicative of of celebration and why shouldn't we celebrate we're saved the anointing of God's holy word has been poured onto us his blood has been poured onto us we've been set free from the law of sin and death that's something that's why those people were dancing around like that it's a joyful thing while there is a desire to do what is right listen to listen to obey and praise God there's also opposition we do have an enemy the spirit of heaviness presents prevents that is effective worship by making the believer feel isolated from God instead of feeling connected to the Lord there are times when a believer will get that way There are distractions everywhere to distract us from being God's servant. They're everywhere. They, if, they, if they originate internally or externally, they all have the same result. The desire to connect with God is left unfulfilled. Can you relate to that? There are times when that happens to all of us. Have you ever experienced the spirit of heaviness? Most of us, I'm sure, have. You know, maybe Sienna didn't. Maybe Tyler didn't. <laughs> and maybe they did. I don't know. Have you ever sought desperately to feel God's presence, but kept falling short? Those are dry times. Those are valley times. I read one study in preparation for this. That their, their claim was that the spirit of heaviness was actually a real spirit, a demon, in other words. Well, that could be. Christians throughout history can relate to the sentiment of not being able to connect with God, going through those valley experiences. 
So believers know the feeling of yearning to be in the presence of God, but still feeling alone. That happened a lot during COVID because a lot of the feeling of being in God's presence happens when we're close with other believers. We're also familiar with the desire of wanting to do right, but continually failing. Jesus knew this about humanity when he said the following, stay awake and pray so that you won't enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I think if you were going to be honest, you need to say that you know what that is, that you know what that means in your own life. Each of us is susceptible to the spirit of heaviness because of our sinful nature. But being susceptible is not the same as giving in. With a willing spirit, we can overcome the weakness of the flesh. A willing spirit. We can overcome that weakness. Jesus offered a solution when he said, stay awake and pray. However, the spirit of heaviness has been affecting us. There is a solution. So a direct mentioning of the spirit of heaviness can be found in the book of Isaiah authored by Isaiah the prophet in chapter 61, which I did read from, we receive an admission from him that the Spirit of God is upon him. The reason the Holy Spirit resides in Isaiah is because of his task as a prophet to interpret um, and share the word of God that he receives. The Spirit of God needed to be on him. Over the course of the chapter, he shares the outcome of this good word, which amounts to many blessings for God's children. Some of these blessings include exchanging misfortunes in life for better circumstances. One of these contrasts includes the spirit of heaviness being exchanged for the garment of praise to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them a garland for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Jehovah, that he may be glorified. The act of, prom of praising God is one that brings us closer to God. Well, the spirit of heaviness disconnects, praise connects. This verse and chapter helps us to better understand the meaning of a spirit of heaviness. The other comparisons in the chapter reflect hardship and adversity experienced by God's people. The spirit of heaviness can be characterized as any intense negative feeling that challenges our faith and what we know about God. Heaviness may result from our own habitual sins like addiction, lying, gossip, or could also occur from the loss of a job, even a loved one. To feel heavy is to be burdened. And to be burdened is not to carry the light of the gospel, which we are called to do. Sometimes you want to do that, but you just can't. There's a burden. There's something pressing you down. Whatever the source of, of the heaviness, we certainly lose sight of God's goodness and have a more magnified picture of our suffering. I think the enemy wants us to concentrate more on our suffering than on the goodness of God. You beat me to the button. <laughs> that was good. I'm proud of you. The important question for the believer is, is, will we cling 
to what we feel about our situation or what we instead know about God. Since the first two humans who sinned, mankind has been born into trouble. While this may be true, we are not called as Christians to give into negative feelings or behaviors, quite the opposite. In the blessings Isaiah shares, there's an underlying promise that God will correct each and every problem. Isaiah purposefully mentions the garment of praise in contrast with the spirit of heaviness to reveal what believers should cling to instead. The Bible has other areas, too, that, in, that indicate just what our spirit should be. The spirit of heaviness is not included in these positive and uplifting descriptions. Instead, we read that the Bible wants our spirit to feel bright, joyful, and most certainly connected to God. What does the Bible say our spirit should be like? Well, it says we should have a grateful spirit, give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. One reason heaviness can overwhelm us is that we have lost sight of God's blessings. Keeping our minds focused on what we do uh, have, as opposed to what we do not have, will lead us to live grateful lives. God is good, and he blesses us daily, but these daily blessings can go unnoticed. If you stop and think about everything God has done for you, about every beat of your heart, every breath of life, that you got up this morning and you could get out of bed, that you had something to eat for breakfast, you can, and you were gonna anticipate lunch. There's so many things God does that we just kinda take them for granted. We're to have a patient spirit, but those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on, wi on wings like eagles. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not faint. Patience is to wait and trust. The most patient of us can wait without complaining. <laughs> most of us, <laughs> we, we do complain, amen. We do our complaining. Life involves plenty of waiting. We practice patience as we pray and wait for God to do something, wait to hear from God. Bible figures like Habakkuk and David experienced their days and seasons of waiting on the Lord. They spent much time in prayer, which was followed by waiting for a response. We spent a lot of time in prayer, but I don't know if we spent a lot of time in waiting just waiting on God and see what he is going to do or what he puts into your heart. The spirit of heaviness was upon them more than once, but they knew how to properly respond to God. Patience. Then we're to have a loving spirit. Dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we also must love one another. 1 John 4, 11, the spirit of heaviness, if not dealt with, can leave us bitter and weak. Those dealing with addiction may fail under the control of the flesh. Others who have given up on people will find themselves alone and potentially angry. Angry with the world, angry with our friends, angry with everybody, our family, even with God. Love keeps us open to serving God and others and ways and to find ways to be loving. Ways to break free from a spirit of heaviness. First of all, know the truth. 
Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. The more informed of Scripture we can become, the less heavy the spirit of heaviness will be. Suffering can make us doubt God, but knowledge reaffirms what we know. By becoming aware of Scripture, we can refute any lie we're tempted to believe with God's truth. There are plenty of promises that God has made for His people in the old days and to us, His children now. The more scripture we know, the more we'll be able to feel his presence. Number two, pray always. First, Thess First Thessalonians uh, 5.17 says that we should pray always. Every day we should thank God for his blessings. We display gratitude with the words we speak. Thanking God for his gifts in prayer. Or even acknowledging our blessings to others. People ask me, how are you at the store or someplace? And if I'm not particularly feeling frisky or well, I say life is hard, but God is good. More prayer equals more communication about our needs and the needs of other people. We're tempted most when we're alone. COVID was very harmful to the church and to believers. Feeling disconnected from God and removed from our community, <clears throat> prayer can change our circumstances and can remind us that we are not alone. We're never alone. Number three, find community. And if someone overpowers one person, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not easily broken, Ecclesiastes 4.12. So not only do fellow believers remind us to be thankful for God's blessings, but they can offer wisdom when we need advice the most in community. Something that's heavy on your heart, you might not be able to figure out, you know, anything about it. But another believer might offer wisdom, might see into that problem and offer a scripture and prayer for you. We find resilience and wisdom in community that we do not possess on our own accord. Scripture is clear about the dangers and power of sin. But to find ourselves equally yoked with fellow believers will make us all stronger. We should push through whatever emotions we feel and remember the truth. Praise will connect us to God. Maybe not immediately, but ultimately, we will again feel his presence. Another truth to recall is that even when we do not feel God's presence, he's still there. Amen. He's there. Even if you don't feel he's there, he's there. The Bible encourages, as I said before, to pray without ceasing because God is always listening. So let's keep that in mind as we go on living this life. Whatever cause we have for the heaviness in our minds and hearts, if we can hold out and continue to seek God, the spirit of heaviness will be exchanged for a garment of praise. Our tears will be replaced with shouts of joy. That's in Psalm 126.5. All that was wrong will one day be made right. When I say one day, that's in God's time. That's his, that's his business. 
This is what Scripture says. Now we just have to trust the Lord to fulfill that Scripture in our life, in our situation, in our family, in each other. So the spirit of heaviness, it weighs down on everybody. All believers have that spirit of heaviness at times, that valley experience at times. And then, and then we have times when we're on a mountaintop. What about you today? Are you in a spirit of heaviness? Do you feel pressed down today? Do you feel a gloom on you today? You know, if I was to be honest, I have that often. I know how to get rid of it. <laughs> Are you in any kind of a place like that? Are you praising God? A garment of praise because He died to pay the penalty for your sins. And you're on your way to heaven. Is that where you are today? Those people in that little film I showed, they were praising God, dancing around. That's all good. That's a good thing. They were just praising God for His goodness to us. But even if, you, even if you sit, some of us can't stand very long, including me. <laughs> but even if you sit there and just praise God, hands up, just say praise. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's a garment of praise. That might be just like you got one arm in it. <laughs> Put the whole thing on. <laughs> praise God for that spirit of heaviness when it comes to you. If it's not on you all the time, it shouldn't be on you all the time. But when it comes, and it does, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Amen. Amen. Would you stand? I'm pretty near done talking now. That's how I close my sermons. I'm done talking now. <laughs> I'm not very formal. Being formal is too perpendicular. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I love every one of you. That's a pastor's heart. And I do, I really do. And I hope that, uh, that the spirit of heaviness isn't on you now. But I would like us to spend a, f a few moments just praising God, the garment of praise. And if you have a heaviness on you or in your life, why don't you come down here? You don't have to dance around and roll on the floor. Well, you can if you want to. Wouldn't bother me. I've been there. <laughs> like, if I danced around, I'd probably have a heart attack now. But if you have the spirit of heaviness, come on down here. Come on down. Nobody. You're all good. Well, that's a good thing. Then let's just praise God together for a little bit. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are so awesome, Lord. So beautiful. So holy. So enormous. So powerful. And so strong. And, let you, and, and yet you care and love each one of us. We thank you for that, Lord. As we put on this garment of praise, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. God. Awesome you are, Lord, in this place. Awesome in each life. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 We love you, Lord. We love you today, Lord. I pray for every person in here, Lord, that they will be able to come to you for the, with the garment of praise and exchange that for the spirit of heaviness any times it comes on them. And Lord, now as we each go our own way, dismiss us in your grace. Bring us back safely next time we meet. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.